Okay, so recently everyone's asking, why are these fires happening? What's the agenda? Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, this is the agenda. If you look up this, I'm not even going to say the word because this, this video will have troubles getting shared, but look it up and your eyes might be opened and a bit worried. Okay, so it's about smart city, no absolute uh, definition, no end point, but rather a process, a series of steps. Imagine new cities where data is open, energy is renewable, water is valued, homes are affordable, and people can live within 10 minutes of all that they need. Cities where world class healthcare meets high tech education, where a new and existing businesses will converge to create more vibrant regional economics. Cities built to unlock all human potential. Cities made possible by high speed rail that can place citizens in our capitals in less time than a morning commute. There are regional cities Clara is building, using the analogy of technology being absolute as soon as the next generation is available. Smart city must exhibit similar thinking. Smart city cannot be built or bought in a one and done manner, but must be continually seek a future ready state. Thus, a smart city relies on a culture of governance that is open to innovation, potential disruption, and adapted to change in order to avoid obsolence. obsolence. Okay, so um, in 2015, the Australian government was paying for this, it was opening tenders where they would match. If you had had money, they would match. Okay, the car the this plan is to build up eight of the world's most advanced sustainable smart greenfield cities and connect them with world-class heritage rail systems between Sydney, Melbourne, Bar, Canberra. Now this is what I've been telling you all about. Look at these areas. These are where the fires are. It's heartbreaking. Okay, so they propose to build a high-speed rail network between Sydney, Melbourne, Bar, Canberra, connecting the proposed inland cities. This would include constructions of stations in each of the eight new cities, as well as high-speed rail platforms being developed for Melbourne, Sydney, and Canberra. Within the plan, there are two viable corridor options, which could be the first stage of this plan. Sydney to Canberra, which includes three Clara cities and or Melbourne to Greater Ship of Shepparton, which includes two of these cities. How about I just say clearer? I think you'll understand if I say clearer, you know what I mean. That's what I mean. I'm not going to say the word. Okay. The five new cities from above will all be within 35 minutes of the relevant capital city. Creating affordable, sustaining housing market is a key driver for it. For clearer. We believe people deserve the opportunity to have rewarding employment, affordable housing, and a reasonable cost of living. Leading global companies will establish high-tech employment with a mix of traditional jobs. Our pedestrian-friendly urban design will minimize motor vehicle expenses, maximize healthy lifestyles, and create more livable, convenient, and connected community. Clearest cities must be connected ones, connected with themselves and back to our major centers. This connected Activities seems from our HS, HSR network, which will run along our corridor. Each city will have its own transport city system, and all new cities will use the high-speed rail to connect with other clearer cities along the corridor. The clearer plan is certainly no small undertaking. However, the two identified corridors are independently, commercially, and socially viable. It's 917 kilometres. Australia is huge, people. We keep telling you, but people don't get it. Okay, the funding. Now the funding ends in 2020, I think March 2020. Clearer will use a private-based value capture model to provide that required resources from the value uplift of the land to fund the related infrastructure, including the high-speed rail. Whilst detailed detail financials are commercial in confidence and therefore not published here, the below information from a submission written for Goodman to the New South Wales Parliamentary Inquiry into capturing the value of transport infrastructure details how the process works. Value of land with no proximity to infrastructure, i.e. rail. 
investment made in infrastructure and then the value of land following building the new uh, infrastructure nearby. So then everything gains. It's all about money, you know. So there's the original value, so it comes five times the value. Obviously, a re as a revenue-raising device, value capture has been in existence for a considerable period of time. However, the creation of value capture models to support the funding of the infrastructure projects has become more sophisticated over recent times. As economies become more complex and the funding gaps of infrastructure cause unintended consequences for both economy broadly and from the shape, the shape of our cities, investigating better methods of raising funds has come into sharp focus. This is a universal recognition across government and industry that well-planned investments in transport infrastructure increase surrounding property value and tax revenues. Research shows that the, these increases are great when transport investment is teamed with integrated land use transport planning. Integrated land use transport planning links transport and land development invest decisions, increases accessibility to transport, reduces private vehicle travel, makes travel makes better use of infrastructure and urban land, ultimately improves the quality of life of residents and workers. So the Transport Infrastructure Council in 2003. Involves a number of factors, long-term strategic land use and infrastructure planning will likened to the adequate and reliable funding sources, proximate and depending zoning, development controls on the land and infrastructure corridors, consistent, coordinated and supported public policies, guidelines and persistence that enable public and private sector stakeholders to invest with confidence, value capture programs can contribute to public infrastructure decision making by promoting smart growth principles. Smart growth means managing urban development patterns and transportation networks to minimise environmental impacts and maximise the social and economic health of the community whilst making prudent use of capital and operating expenditures. The infrastructure task for cities like Sydney and Melbourne is made more difficult to pass planning policies that promoted urban sprawl. As a consequence, the population density in Sydney is approximately 350 people per square kilometre over 12,000 square kilometre basin. Connecting the parts of Sydney together, there is a significant challenge unless density around existing infrastructure nodes become an accepted, normalised planning outcome. By the way of example, London, Paris, New York all have population densities in excess of 6,000 people per square kilometre. Not surprised, unsurprisingly, all those cities have expensive public transport networks and approximately 80% of the residents, residents rely on public transport for daily travel. As cities, they have developed planning policies that make reliance on public transport convenient by creating livable, walkable, cyclable, mixable use pre precincts. Our city planners need to erase a less homogeneous and prescriptive planning framework, framework which creates activity silos, which in turn creates reliance on cars to move between regions for work, play or leisure by creating a well-planned mixed-use precincts, intensifying the use of existing infrastructure, new infrastructure and a more effective and ambitious planning outcome can be achieved. Now see, Sydney had the biggest tram network in the Southern Hemisphere. It was bigger than Melbourne and it was ripped up so they could make all the money they could on petrol. Okay. The concept of a smart city is not static, it's fluid. There is no... I've read that bit. Yes, I've read that bit. Okay, so the high-speed rail. The high-speed rail is present on all populated continents except Australia. The clearer plan intends to implement H. SR, which is high-speed rail, in its identified corridors, as well as linking new cities along the route that are located nearby existing regional towns. Whilst the clearer proposal is the one centred on the concept of decentralising the Australian population away from major cities into viable, sustainable and high-tech second-tier inland cities, the high-speed rail piece is vital to the plan. High-speed rail is the best available technology for mass transit of people over populated proposed distances in a timely and affordable manner. Further, high-speed rail will be the best top technology available for the foreseeable future, meaning high-speed rail in Australia can be 50 to 100-year infrastructure platform that can be establish, establish the national interior for growth for the next century. The world's best high-speed rail option, superconducting magnetic levitation, maglev trains, Japan. The superconducted maglev trains remains the most advanced, fastest high-speed rail option in the world today. 
The train can reach speeds of 500 km an hour and has reached 603 km an hour during testing. At 500 km an hour, the speeds the train will allow the Express Melbourne to Sydney service to complete its journey inside 1 hour 50 minutes. Currently, Melbourne to Sydney is about ooh, probably 8 hours, 9 hours, roughly. About 9, 10 hours, yeah. Depends with the, you know, how you drive. Since the maglev has been tested since 2003, a continuous running test was conducted over a distance of 1,787 miles, 89 round trips on the test line. Train set, 16 car train sets can carry 1,000 passengers. Train sets require approximately 25 metres of platform for each car in the set. The SC maglev is the best used on a viaduct, elevating the line over open country to address the right-of-way matters and viable topography. In built-up areas, the use of tunnelling is the best option to deliver the dedicated SC maglev into CBDs. The TBG or from France. The TBG test train scheduled for the fastest wheel train reaching 574.8 kilometres, 357 miles per hour on 3rd of April 2007. Mid 2011 scheduled TBGB trains operated at high speed in conventional train service in the world regularly reaching 320 kilometers, which is 200 miles an hour. The trains are made up of two power cars and 10 carriages with a total of 485 seats. The TBG system itself extends to neighboring countries, either directly Switzerland into Italy, uh, TGV derived from networks linking France, Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands, as well as France and Belgium to the United Kingdom, Eurostar. Several, several future lines are planned, including the extension within France and surrounding cities. Cities such as Tours have become part of the TGV commute about around Paris. China HSR. China has the world's longest high-speed rail network with over 19,000 kilometres. That's massive of track. Services as of January 2016, which is more than the rest of the world's high-speed rail tracks combined, and the network length of 30,000 kilometres is planned for 2020. The fastest trains can reach operational speeds of up to 380 kilometers an hour, 240 miles an hour, or the trains have their operating speeds reduced to 300 kilometers an hour. Trains similar to the Valorago e design in Spain, they're eight cars, 200 meters long, seat 548 passengers. Imagine living over 200 kilometers from the CBD of Sydney or Melbourne, being able to commute to the city in like 30 minutes. That is a game changer that high speed rail offers. This was in 2016, this came out, so as I said, these funding for these closed in March 2020. If you live in those areas, I suggest you have a bit of look into these. So they're, you know, they're trying to get the workforce and mobility productivity and pollution savings, automobile accident savings, greenhouse gas emission savings, time savings. So, population increase. Pop Australia's population is projected to increase 69% between now and 2061, up from the 24.7 million to 41.5 million people, and that's 16.8 more million Australians needing a home. Okay. Okay, so I'll just leave that one for you guys to have a think. Let's have a quick play. Okay, so we'll just have a quick listen to this plan. For the problems are not all solved, and the battles are not all won. And we stand today on the edge of a new frontier. The frontier of unknown opportunities and perils. But the new frontier of which I speak is not a set of promises. It is a set of challenges. But I believe that the times require imagination and courage and perseverance. I'm asking each of you to be pioneers towards that new frontier. Can't believe they're using the voice of a man Australia. that actually tried to stop Our this bad people. Is home to a magnificent inland of breathtaking landscapes. But today, more people live in Sydney than in all of New Zealand. Sydney and Melbourne combined house 46% of Australians. Urban sprawl, congestion, longer commutes and unaffordable housing threaten the quality of life for too many. It's time to restart, reset and reimagine the way we, we go. on our continent. 
Clara has a plan to rebalance the Australian settlement. We will build new, regional, compact, sustainable smart cities and connect them by the world's most advanced high-speed rail. Building new cities to decentralise our population offers untold benefits to our capitals and to our regions. Imagine new cities where data is open, energy is renewable, water is valued, homes are affordable, and people can live within 10 minutes of all they need. Cities where world-class healthcare meets high-tech education. When you and I bet there'll be a, you know, a, a, a chip that you would have to take to live in these places. All human potential. I bet you'll all be money cities free as well. By high -speed rail that can place citizens in our capitals in money less won't time exist. Morning commute. These are the regional cities Clara is building. The question is not whether Australians deserve the best that the future has to offer. The question is, what are we waiting for? Australia, join us to reimagine the possible. Join us to transform our future. Okay, so those that forget the past are deemed to learn from the mistakes again. Thank you everyone for listening and watching if you're here at the end. Thank you. Hit that like. If you're not a subscriber, thank you, but I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Thank you. Bye.